All right, so here we're going to look at phenols, okay, in more detail. Now, phenols, phenols are weak acids, okay, or weakly acidic. So if you, if you, for example, let's take a look at, let's take a look at phenol over here, right? So we have this phenol group over here. Now, if you think about, if you think about an acid, if the bronsted lowry acids, what do they, what kind of chemical behavior do they exhibit? They'll donate a proton, right? If they're bronsted lowry acids, they donate protons. So let's say that I've, that I put phenol in an aqueous solution, okay? If for something to be considered acidic, it means it has a stronger tendency to donate protons than water itself, right? The water is your relative comparison. Anything that, anything that has a stronger tendency than water to donate protons is considered an acid. So in this particular case, when, when water and phenol, when water and phenol react, essentially what happens is that phenol forms this, it forms this, conjugate base and you form H3O plus, okay? So here you have phenol and this is called the phenoxide ion, phenoxide ion. Okay, this is the conjugate base of phenol. So the reason why phenols behave as weak acids, right? We can say that phenols are, we can say that phenols are better acids than water. Okay, so we can say that phenols are stronger acids than water. In other words, and the re the way we look at it is by this. So if you, for example, if you look at water key ionization, if you look at water key ionization, what do you have? You have H two O forming H3O plus and OH minus. Or you can say that H2O forms H plus and OH minus, right? So the conjugate base of water is OH minus and the conjugate base of phenol is the phenoxide ion, right? The conjugate base of water is the phenoxide. Uh, conjugate base of water is hydroxide and the conjugate base of phenol is the phenoxide ion. Okay? So if we, look at, if we look at the conjugate base of phenol here, this is the phenoxide ion. So here you have the phenoxide ion, okay? So if you look at phenols again, right, this is the phenoxide ion. So if you look at phenols, what you have is, this is the conjugate base of phenol, right? And if you look at water, the conjugate base of water is the hydroxide ion, right? And what happens is, what happens is that in the phenoxide ion, in the phenoxide ion, what happens is that the lone pair, the oxygen atom, the, you have a negatively charged oxygen atom. You have a negatively charged oxygen atom. Phenol. Water. Right? And what happens is that over here, the negative charge on the oxygen atom is delocalized into the ring, which means that, which means that it makes this oxygen or this negatively charged less reactive, okay? So I'll write that down, okay? In the phenoxide ion, in the phenoxide ion, right? The negative charge, the negative charge is delocalized, is delocalized over the entire ring over the entire ring, okay? Which makes, which makes the, which makes it less reactive, less reactive towards H plus, okay? The negative charge is delocalized, right? The more concentrated the charge, the more reactive it is towards H plus, right? So the delocalization of charge makes it less reactive towards H plus, okay? So we can say that the phenoxide ion, phenoxide ion is more stable, is more stable than the, than the hydroxide ion, 
because hydroxide may you don't have any such delocalization the negative charge is concentrated entirely on the oxygen okay and the more stable the conjugate base the better the acid okay so we can say that therefore phenol is more acidic more acidic than water all right so let's look at a molecule of phenol itself so here you have phenol okay now again we know that the oxygen ka lone pair delocalizes into the ring right and we know that as a consequence the co bond is stronger but if electron density is being withdrawn towards the ring if it's delocalizing into the ring then what's happening to the electron density between the oxygen and the hydrogen is decreasing right if the electron density is traveling to the left that means the electron density between oxygen and hydrogen is decreasing so if the electron density between oxygen and hydrogen is decreasing what's happening to the bond strength it's decreasing lesser electrostatic forces of attraction so it's easier for h plus to break off and if it's easier for h plus to break off what does that tell you about its acidity it's becoming more acidic as a consequence of delocalization okay so another way to think about this is that another way to think about this is that the delocalization of electrons delocalization of electrons from the oxygen from the oxygen into the ring or into the delocalized pi structure right right into the ring results in results in a decrease in electron density electron density in the oh bond in the oh bond Ah, into the ring from the oxygen into the ring results in a decrease in electron density in the OH bond, making it making it weaker. Right? There's lesser electrostatic force of attraction. So if the OH bond becomes weaker, if the OH bond becomes weaker, then that would mean that therefore it is easier. Okay, or easier for the OH bond. to break right and it is and to form h plus ions right so ionization is easier it's easier for the oh bond to break okay and if the oh bond breaks what you have is ionization So in your syllabus, they want you to be able to compare the. So what we've said is, okay, what we've said over here is that when we talk about acidity, okay, when we talk about acidity. We've seen that phenol is more acidic than water. Okay, and you can look at this by looking at their pKa. The pKa of phenol, okay, at room temperature, at or as around is around 10.0, whereas for water, it's 14.0. now pka means the larger the pka the larger the pka the smaller the ka so jitna chhota pka hoga utna bada ka hoga so phenol has a larger ka than water larger acid dissociation ka of water is just kw right so kw pkw is just 14 you guys have learned this in acids and bases pkw is just 14 so phenol is more acidic it has a smaller pka in other words a larger ka than water okay and ethanol is actually less acidic okay than water so in, in water ethanol doesn't behave as a base or an acid okay and over here ethanol ka pka is actually around 16.0 okay and now why is ethanol less acidic than water so if you think about ethanol if you think about ethanol over here you have ch3 You have CH three, CH two OH, right? And assume that it does ionize, even though it doesn't actually. But let's say that it did. What would you form? You would form CH three CH two O minus, right? That would be your conjugate base, and then you would also form H plus, right? And this is called the this is called the ethoxide ion. 
we would call this is called the ethoxide ion. Does anyone remember a reaction where we make the ethoxide ion? So this is the ethoxide ion and the ethoxide ion if we compare it to the hydroxide, if we compare it to the hydroxide ion, the ethoxide ion is actually a, is actually less stable than hydroxide because the electron donating effect of the alkyl group, the electron donating effect of the alkyl group over here means that, it means that electron density is more concentrated on the, is more concentrated on the oxygen atom, right? So if you look, for example, if you look at the ethoxide ion here, right, if you look at the conjugate base, right, this is what happens. You have inductive effect of the alkyl group. So that means that the electron density on the oxygen is increasing. So it really wants to, it really doesn't want to lose its H plus. It really wants to combine with the H plus. In other words, the backward reaction is much more favored, okay. So over here, we can say that ethanol is a weaker acid than water, okay. Or is less acidic than water, we should say, okay. We can, we can say weaker as we can say it's less acidic than water. Okay. And the reason why it's less acidic is because, right, we talk about the ethoxide ion, right, the ethyl group, okay, in the ethoxide ion is an electron donating group, okay, or has a positive inductive effect. So because it's an electron donating group, right, therefore we can say, therefore we can say that the, the negative charge is more concentrated, is more concentrated on the oxygen atom in the ethoxide ion, okay, making it, making making ethoxide ion less stable, less stable than the hydroxide ion. And the more reactive the conjugate base, the less stable the conjugate base, the less stable or more reactive the conjugate base, the less acidic something is, okay, because other Conjugate base is the reactive, it's called a backward reaction is the favored, the forward reaction disfavored, okay. So if it's less stable than the hydroxide ion, it means that we can say therefore ethanol is less acidic than water. Alright, so phenols are acids, they react with sodium hydroxide. So this is how you would write the structural formula of phenols, okay? You have C6H5OH. You had benzene was C6H6, but one of the hydrogen atoms has been replaced by an OH group, right? And what you have is C6H5OH, it reacts with, it reacts with NaOH to form C6. H5 O negative Na plus, that's the salt, okay. This is called sodium phenoxide, sodium phenoxide, right, the anion is phenoxide over here and water. Okay. So this is a neutralization reaction, this is a neutralization reaction. All right, the same reaction that you've seen in AS, the test for the OH group, this reaction is universal, right? You can use sodium, so you have C6H5OH, and when this reacts with, when this reacts with sodium, right, what do you get? You will form, for every mole of OH, you're gonna get half a mole of hydrogen gas. You're going to form C6H5O negative and a positive again sodium phenoxide and you're going to you're going to form hydrogen gas okay 
Now, unlike carboxylic acids, unlike carboxylic acids, okay, phenols do not react with sodium carbonate. Okay, they're not strong enough acids to react with sodium carbonate. So they're slightly weaker acids than carboxylic acids, okay? But they're still acidic. So they can react with sodium hydroxide, but they can't react with, but they don't react with sodium carbonate, okay? So unlike carboxylic acids. All right, so let's summarize the reaction for phenols, right? We know that if, if, if we start with a phenol, right, start with this phenol over here, right, we know that phenols are much more reactive, we know that phenols are much more reactive with, uh, than benzene is, right, and the evidence for that reactivity is when phenols are reacted with aqueous bromine. So if we use bromine aqueous, right, Br2 aqueous, Obviously, in this case, we're going to use 3Br2 aqueous, right? What we're going to get is this guy over here, right? So you have OH, and then again, phenol is 2, 4, 6 directing. So you get a bromine, a bromine, and a bromine, like this, right? And the name of this compound is 2, 4, 6 tribromophenol. This is also a test for phenols because it phenols ka test kya hota hai? when you add bromine aqueous, it decolorizes bromine aqueous. So that's the same as alkenes, but it also forms a white precipitate. Okay, decolorized aqueous bromine and forms a white precipitate. So you have, and obviously the byproduct is HBr. Okay. An almost identical reaction takes place with identical reaction takes place with fluorine as well. This isn't given in your syllabus, but the reaction is the exact same. All right, so we write it down. What we have is, again, a phenol, it reacts with chlorine aqueous to form, to form what? This is 246 trichloro, 246 trichlorophenol. And this is also a white precipitate. Right? And the other byproduct that you make is HCl in this case. All right. The other reaction that we have with phenols is that we know that because they're so much more reactive, you can just react it with dilute nitric acid. You can react it with dilute nitric acid. Right? So if you just add HNO3, if you just use HNO3, what you have is this, right? You have either this product or you have this product over here, right? So you have the OH and then the nitro group either goes on the two position, okay, or the four position, right? And the other product that you have here is H2O. So this is either two nitrophenol or 2 nitrophenol or 4 nitrophenol. Okay? Now, if you react phenols with concentrated nitric acid, if you react phenols with concentrated nitric acid, we haven't seen this reaction, but I'll write this down. But if you react it with concentrated nitric acid, you're going to need 3 moles of nitric acid over here. Okay? And what's going to happen is that similar to what happened with bromine, if you concentrated hogi nitric acid, again, you don't need a catalyst, you don't need any heat, just the increase in concentration will suffice. What you will get is 246 trinitrophenol. Okay. Again, because phenols are so reactive towards electrophile, because phenols are so reactive towards electrophile, again, make sure you clearly show the nitrogen atom is bonded to the ring. Okay. So this is 246 trinitro, trinitrophenol. Right, and then we have 
because phenols are weak acids, right, they can react with sodium hydroxide. They can react with sodium hydroxide. So if you react a phenol with sodium hydroxide, what do you form? You form a salt, which is sodium phenoxide. We wrote the name down yesterday, right? That's a weak acid and you form H2O. So it's a neutralization reaction. And we said that phenols don't react with, they don't react with sodium carbonate. Okay, they only react with sodium hydroxide. And then the last reaction that we saw for phenols is that, that that's the test for the OH group, right, is that if we react it with sodium, again we form a salt, sodium phenoxide, and we form hydrogen gas. All right, so how do we distinguish between, how do we distinguish between a carboxylic acid, phenols, and alcohols? Now with alcohols, if you add blue litmus, blue litmus, right, alcohols are not acidic, so they won't turn it red, whereas phenols and carboxylic acids will turn blue litmus red, okay. So that's a, that's a qualitative test, okay, visibility, uh, appearance se aapko bata chal jayega. Chemical test ke hai, agar aap sodium hydroxide daloge, to sirf phenols or acids banayenge kya? Salt, because they're acidic, alcohols again are not acidic, so they won't react to sodium hydroxide. And with sodium carbonate, phenols aren't strong enough acids to react with sodium carbonate, but carboxylic acids are. So you'd only see bubbles of colorless gas with, with carboxylic acids and not with phenols. So to distinguish between phenol and carboxylic acid, you have to use sodium carbonate, okay? And if you wanna just distinguish between alcohols and anything else, you can just use blue litmus and sodium hydroxide. And these two. 